So today I'm going to tell you uh, the story of Newcastle University and Seven Stories, the National Centre of Children's Books, and how we're collaborating around the Research Excellence Framework and Impact. Now, all good stories have a beginning, middle and an end, so I'm going to start my presentation by introducing my two key characters, Seven Stories and Newcastle University, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the Research Excellence Framework 2014, because I'm aware that not everyone will know too much about that. And then in the middle of my presentation, I'm going to take you from Warhorse to the Wombles, as the title of my presentation suggests, and from um, our current Knowledge Transfer Partnership to the Vital North Partnership. And I'm going to end by talking just briefly on um, the next ref and what we know about it. And I'm going to represent this beginning, middle and end visually over the course of my presentation by building a bookshelf on the table in front of you, as you do. So, uh, once upon a time, Uh, yeah, let me introduce seven stories. So as I say, they're the National Centre for Children's Books and we're based in Newcastle upon time. We were founded in 19, six, uh, 1996 and opened our visitor centre in 2005. And our mission is to save, share and celebrate Britain's literary heritage for children. And we do that by holding an archive of um, material by British children's authors and illustrators from 1930 to the present day. In our visitor centre we have... Um, a, a series of exhibitions which go on to tour nationally all around children's literature and we have a busy events program lots of learning and participation work out in schools and community settings as well now um, i mentioned that seven stories opened its doors in 2005 and in that same year um, newcastle university founded the children's literature unit within the school of english literature language and linguistics and this is a research group dedicated to the study of children's books history so between 2005 and 2014, the um, Children's Literature Unit really closely collaborated with Seven Stories in a lot of different ways. And this led Newcastle University to submit the Children's Literature Unit's work as um, an impact case study for the 2014 Research Excellence Framework. Now, Research Excellence Framework is um, the way that the government measure the quality of research in the UK higher education institutions. And the last one was, hosted, uh, was held in 2014. REF 2014 um, was new. It replaced previous assessment exercises, such as the Research Ex uh, Assessment Exercise 2008. What was assessed? Well, the assessors looked at research outputs, so uh, research papers and publications, that accounted for 65% of the marks. They looked at the research environment, so the number of staff and students in the academic department. They looked at the resources and facilities available to them. That accounted for 15%. And the final 20% of the marks were um, this new criteria of impact. Now, um, that was assessed through a series of specific case studies. And the Higher, uh, the higher Education Funding Council for England defines impact as an effect on, change or benefit to, the economy, society, culture, public policy or services, health, the environment or quality of life beyond academia. And as I say, this was a new criteria from previous assessment exercises. So I think that's really the big difference uh, between um, REF 2014 and its predecessors. Because for the first time, academics had to prove to their funders that research had an impact in the real world beyond academia. Why is REF important? Well, um, for a research-intensive university like Newcastle, obviously reputation. Um, it's good to attract the best staff and students. Uh, benchmarking, the REF helps universities to benchmark their performance against other um, institutions and helps them to make strategic decisions about where they focus. And funding. So the higher education funding councils were going to use the results from the 2014 REF to determine the amount of core quality research related funding um, awarded to um, universities from 2015-16 onwards. So, I mentioned that Seven Stories was one of those case studies for Newcastle, and you can go and read our impact case study. It is on the um, Research Excellence Framework um, impact site, so impact.ref.ac.uk. 
If you search seven stories, we are the first hit. Um, and I do recommend you read it. Um, so, um, I hear you ask, what happened between 2005 and 2014? Um, well, I'm not going to tell you in detail in my presentation today, because I think you, you can go and read the case study, and that, that will tell you. But, just to sum up, it talks about how the Children's Literature Unit's research has underpinned the development of Seven Stories Archive, how it has supported Seven Stories exhibitions, how the staff from the Children's Literature Unit's research has contributed to the professional development of Seven Stories staff, how their work has raised the profile of the Seven Stories collection internationally, and how their work contributed to Seven Stories receiving Arts Council England's national accreditation, national styling, um, to call themselves the National Centre for Children's Books in 2012. Now, the Seven Stories um, Impact Case Study was given a four-star quality rating. That's the top level. Um, and this is defined as world-leading in terms of originality, significance and rigour. And together with the other case studies, this led to the School of English at Newcastle ranking first out of all English departments in the UK for research impact and first of all subjects studied at UK Newcastle University. So going back to why it is important, in terms of both um, the reputation and benchmarking of the Children's Literature work, the Unit's work with Seven Stories, this has really done wonders for the unit and for the School of English and for the partnership between the two organisations. And just talking in pure funding terms, I crunched the numbers, and um, just looking at that one impact case study without any um, references to Seven Stories in the research outputs or the research environment, um, that one impact case study related to over £60,000 of funding in the 2015-16 academic year alone, and that will recur annually until the next ref. So there's really some significant funding involved. So, read the case study. But what I thought might be more interesting to talk to you uh, about today is what we've been doing since 2014 and what we're doing now, what's more current. So, um, the first story I'm going to add to my bookshelf is Michael Morpurgo's War Horse. Now, Michael Morpurgo, uh, award-winning author um, of hundreds of children's books and former children's laureate, donated his entire archive to Seven Stories in, uh, well, last year, 2015. And this formed the basis of a new knowledge exchange programme that's been going on between uh, Seven Stories and Newcastle University this past year. So we've been engaging through a knowledge transfer partnership, and if you're in the uh, Progressive Partnerships um, session this morning, you would have heard a bit about um, an interesting one with the National Trust as well. So um, our uh, knowledge transfer partnership, um, well, like all of them, is, uh, yeah, their knowledge transfer partnerships are a a collaboration between a university and an external organisation and they um, aim to embed university research into external businesses to help them innovate and grow. So our, our knowledge transfer partnership is um, funded by the AHRC, the Arts and Humanities Research Council, and it aims to embed a research function into Seven Stories collections and exhibitions team. So Dr Jessica Medhurst, our KTP research associate, um, firstly looked at Michael Morpurgo's archive um, to find the treasures within it and this um, has informed Seven Stories' new exhibition on Michael Morpurgo. Michael Morpurgo, A Life Done Stories, which opened in July in our visitor centre and will tour nationally, I think starting with the V&A's Museum of Childhood. So Jess's work, as I say, helped us to sift through that collection, um, find what we had in it. Um, and then she also wrote a series of looking closer panels for the exhibition that were aimed at adult audiences to give more depth to the exhibition. He's also been disseminating this research at conferences and doing public events with us, so things like um, talks and tours. Now that the exhibition has opened, um, Jess's work, because she's here with us until December, has now turned to Seven Stories Permanent Collections Gallery. So currently we don't have a permanent gallery of our collections, um, but that's something we're aiming to open in 2018. So she's been looking at our collection as a whole and trying to, to see what sort of na narratives we can tell about British children's literature through our collection. And um, to my knowledge, this knowledge transfer partnership is the first of its kind in that it's a, um, a partnership between a university English department and an external business, so the first English literature KTP, 
And um, it's also formed an important innovation for Newcastle as an organisation because um, it's also um, been the first of three that we've uh, managed to uh, get in English. Learning and participation. So I'm going to add to my bookshelf for this one, Beverly Naidoo's book, Journey to Joburg, um, because I want to talk about the work of Seven Stories Learning and Participation team, and particularly the work they're doing with the School of Education, Communication and Language Sciences at Newcastle University. So the reason why I've picked this book is because um, Beverly Naidoo's Journey to Joburg formed the basis of an innovative learning project um, between Seven Stories and Shotton Hall Academy in um, Newcastle. So, Seven Stories uh, Learning and Participation Manager, Debbie Beeks, worked with the school and the Seven Stories Archive, and they um, created a performance based on the archival material, which, <laughs> which um, yeah, they then performed with Beverly, as you can see in this picture. Now, this is a really good example of inquiry-led learning, and that's a research interest of um, Professor David Leet, who is a professor in the um, School of Education, Communication and Language Sciences. So he's um, particularly interested in, in community curriculum making. And Debbie Beeks has been um, working with David to use this as a case study as part of his research, and he's, um, she's also been disseminating at events with David as well. Other work we're doing with the School of Education, Communication and Language Sciences um, includes uh, the Centre for Learning and Teaching is evaluating a project that Seven Stories are running called Living Books. This is a, an early years project uh, around repeated reading, so it's encouraging early years uh, practitioners and parents and nursery settings to share books with young children. And the Centre for Learning and Teaching is providing um, some evaluation of that project using um, a theory of change methodology, which they got a lot of experience in. And we're also working with um, Professor James Law, who is um, a communication and language sciences professor. And um, he, he's got a particular interest in um, parent-child reading and school readiness, so we're doing a lot of work with him too. Fellowships and studentship. So I'm going to add to my books out for this one. Uh, David Armand's My Dad's a Birdman, uh, because the first of the fellowships I want to talk about is named after David. So our David Armand fellowships are um, an annual fellowship that um, are jointly offered by Seven Stories and Newcastle University. And they're aimed at early career researchers and postgraduate students. And they enable um, you to come and uh, go pay a study visit to Newcastle to study the Seven Stories collection. In the picture, you'll see um, one of our other fellowship uh, activities recently. This is um, Professor Karen Sanz O'Connor, and she, is, um, she was the Leverhulme Visiting Professor with us um, from 2015 to 2016, just left in the summer. So Karen um, uh, is a professor at Buffalo State University, and her research interest is in um, the Black British Child in Children's Literature. So she came to Seven Stories for 10 months to study our collections and collections around the UK. And this is leading to some really interesting legacy projects. Um, so we're collaborating still, the two organisations with Karen, uh, to come up with a symposium next November all around racism in children's literature as part of Newcastle's Freedom City Festival, celebrating uh, 50 years since Martin Luther King's honorary degree speech in Newcastle. And the last um, thing I wanted to mention under this heading was um, the Northern Bridge Doctoral Training Partnership. So um, Seven Stories are really pleased to announce that we're um, running with Northern Bridge um, a studentship offer um, as part of their competition. So Seven Stories are launching a partnership award with Northern Bridge as one of their strategic partners. And this, will, this is basically a targeted call so students can apply to um, Northern Bridge to study for a three-year fully funded PhD, funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council, to look at Seven Stories collections. We're also developing collections collaboratively as well. 
So Karen's work, I just mentioned Karen, uh, Karen a, minute, a moment ago, she's been helping us to identify gaps in our collection in terms of um, diversity. Uh, Dr Lucy Pearson, a lecturer in children's literature at Newcastle, has been helping us to assess archives for acquisition. Um, and the book I'm going to add to my bookshelf for this one is um, Catherine Storr's book, Marianne Dreams, because this is forming uh, the basis of a new resource that Professor Kim Reynolds, um, who's a professor of children's literature at Newcastle, is developing. And you can see a clip of it in the video um, that forms the background to this slide. So Kim's research is all around the Catherine Storr collection that Seven Stories hold. And um, she's working with both the Seven Stories collections team and um, researchers from Culture Lab at the university, which is um, like a digital cultures group within the School of Arts and Cultures. And they are together creating a, a virtual reality online resource where you'll be able to use your phone to um, go inside the house of Marianne Dreams and basically explore um, the house that is, that is within the book. And as you focus in on particular objects, things will appear, things will move, characters will pop out, you'll find out more information about them. And as you go through the experience, um, it will also all get a little bit more odd um, and disconcerting, as is the story of Marianne Dreams. Um, so, yeah, in terms of developing collections, as I say, we're working with academics to um, acquire new collections, to look at the gaps in our collections, and also provide new ways of accessing them. And Seven Stories also helps Newcastle University in terms of its public engagement with research. And for this one, I'm going to add to my bookshelf uh, Little Mouse's Big Book of Fears by Emily Gravett, because um, the Big Book of Hope and Fears is featuring in um, an event we're hosting in November, which is all around um, hope and fear in children's books as part of the 2016 Being Human Festival, which is the National Festival of the Humanities. So we will be doing a, a collections handling that involves the little white mice uh, from Emily's book. We're also doing a lot of work together around schools. Um, so we're working with the AHRC's Living Legacies Engagement Centre at Newcastle, and they're doing a schools workshop with us all around um, our Michael Moore Pergo collection and the Michael Moore Pergo galleries. And Seven Stories are also working with the University Library's outreach team in the Robinson Library around a project on fairy tales for gifted and talented year eights and doing a workshop with them. And the weekend just gone, we also um, worked with the Newcastle City Futures Urban Living Partnership, which is a really flagship project for Newcastle University. And it's a research project all around the city of the future of the city of Newcastle Gateshead and fostering innovation. So we had a weekend um, of activities at Seven Stories uh, in our studio, we had lots of art, uh, craft activities which involved building a new castle of the future. And we had um, some digital workshops too, all around looking at what Newcastle and Gateshead will look like in 2065. And although I know my uh, the panel today is all about uh, research. I did actually want to mention the student experience because I think often um, collaborating with academics around stu you know students and teaching can lead to research collaborations. So I think there's there's definite overlap. Um, and for this one, I'm going to finally add the Wombles to my bookshelf um, because uh, this is forming the basis of some student placements we're offering this year as part of the Museums, Galleries and Heritage MA course. And we're also um, offering career development modules to any student who um, is eligible to take them. And as part of that, they'll be working with our collections team, uh, helping us to sort through our Elizabeth Beresford collection. But we're also supporting other courses. We um, recently had a visit from the BA in Education first years. Uh, we've, uh, next, next week, yeah, we've got the English Literature third year children's literature students coming in for a visit. And we're offering um, project opportunities for music students too. And the last book I have to add to uh, my bookshelf today is Robert Westall's A Place for Me. And that's because I wanted to talk very briefly about the Vital North Partnership, which is the partnership I manage. So I'm Vital North Partnership Manager. 
The um, Fife North Partnership, as Laura mentioned at the start, is an Arts Council England funded project from 2015 to 2018. And um, one of its key aims is to strengthen and upscale the relationship between Newcastle University and Seven Stories. So my role as Vital North Partnership Manager is to um, basically facilitate, develop, project manage, uh, provide communications for the partnership. So if it's a joint research project, if it's a joint teaching project, if it's a joint event, if it's something around a joint collection, I have some sort of hand in that somewhere. Uh, and I'd be really happy to talk to anyone further about my role in um, uh, the Vital North Partnership too. So... So, I said I would finish by briefly talking about the next ref. Well, we, the thing with the next ref is that we don't actually know a, a huge amount about it just yet, because the government haven't revealed their plan. Um, but, um, from what we know, um, it, we think it is likely to happen in maybe 2021, uh, 2020 or 2021. Um, that impact may play an even greater role, so the government have previously said that maybe about 25% of the marks would be awarded to impact. And um, the Russell Group of Universities have called for impact to be measured on an institution-wide basis rather than just departmental. But I think what all of these stories that I've added to my bookshelf today and all of the collaborations that I've mentioned um, sort of tell me is that, that Newcastle University are very likely to um, submit seven stories as a uh, research excellence framework impact case study uh, whenever and however the next ref comes about. And uh, that's the end. And I'll be really happy to take any questions at the end of the panel. <laughs>